Our next speaker is Holaku Ramanan. Holaku. Holaku is receiving his PhD in computer science with an emphasis in machine learning. He is advised by Vishi, Vishi Wanathan, and Monfred Warmuth. A fun fact, Holaku has an Erdos number of three. His research focuses primarily on online learning, multi-arm bandits, learning structured concepts, and combinatorial objects. As a summer intern, Holaku worked at Google, Microsoft, and eBay. This summer, he will be a researcher at Kyushu University in Japan. Prior to US, US, UCSC, he obtained his Bachelor of Science in Mathematics and Computer Science from Baha'i Institute for Higher Education in Iran. Halaku, please. Thank you, Dean Wolf, for your, in, in, for your introduction. Wow. Congrats. <laughs> When I came to this country as a refugee six years ago, I never imagined that I would be standing here in front of you today. I feel so privileged and absolutely honored to be here with the professors, my fellow students, and classmates. As I am standing here right now, this very second, this is a wow moment. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Looking back, I can see that the past 10 years were far from easy for me. In Iran, I was not allowed to enter universities merely because of my beliefs in the Baha'i faith. I had to pursue higher education at the Baha'i Institute for Higher Education, or BIHE for short, an underground university established by the Iranian Baha'i community, which the Iranian government had always been, and still is, trying to shut down. There was always a chance for everyone associated with BIHE, be it students, faculty, or staff, to get arrested, questioned, interrogated, or sentenced to jail. There were times that I spent days and nights away from home as I feared I may get arrested. My crime? being a teaching assistant. I escaped Iran and came to the US as a religious refugee. I distinctly remember when I first visited Santa Cruz back in 2012. I had a chance to visit California. And Professor Manfred Barmuth graciously invited me to his beautiful house in Santa Cruz. That was the moment that I thought, perhaps this is it. This is my chance. Having faced persecution and educational discrimination in Iran, everything at UCSC amazed me. Face-to-face -face interaction with the professors, dedicated lab for research, even a library with thousands of books about science and engineering. Most importantly, though, I had the opportunity to study without the fear of getting arrested or questioned. I remember in the very first lecture that I attended, the machine learning course by, offered by Professor David Hembold, I teared up. To me, it was simply amazing to see the lecture happening in a well-equipped classroom with large boards, a functioning projector, and without any concern, the government official may invade our class. Several years have passed since that first lecture and I'm now getting my PhD. <laughs> For all of us, this is a significant transition. Some of, us, some of us are going into industry to do research and engineering. And some of us are staying in academia, pursuing a postdoc or another graduate program. 
Nevertheless, for all of us, it is the end of this chapter of our lives and the beginning of the next. Santa Cruz UCSC and its unique features will always be in our minds throughout our lives. Beach volleyball, surfing, the deers, hiking trails, all of these experiences will always be in our memories, along with the great, amazing, and yet challenging years of graduate school. Each one of us joined our programs from the unique communities and backgrounds that raised us. We all joined UCSC with our very own struggles and challenges. Some of us have experienced racism, sexism, religious persecution, and other forms of social injustice. But beyond our own personal experiences, we all had a collective journey. What brought all of us together was our passion for education, our thirst for knowledge, our eagerness for discovery, and our hunger for science and research. What united us were our common struggles. We all have experienced countless sleepless nights around deadlines. We know how it feels when a paper submission gets rejected. Many of us had had to deal with imposter syndrome in one form or another. Almost all of us have experienced instances of miscommunication with our advisors. <laughs> yeah, through that, right? <laughs> Several of us had to go through the process of switching advisors. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Regardless of our nationalities and ethnicities, religions and beliefs, genders and sexual orientations, we came together and overcame these obstacles. We went through the all-nighters together on our deadlines. We helped each other out when our research hit what we thought was a dead end. We shared each other's story when we had a hard time communicating constructively with our advisors. We attended each other's practice talks and gave each other feedback on our papers. And finally, we, when we succeeded, we celebrated together. Nothing can stop us as the next generation of engineers and researchers. And yes, it was very hard, but yes, we did it. Congratulations. As we are going through a transition into the next chapter of our lives, we are off to the next stage with a highly educated group of diverse friends we made in grad school, with the lessons we have learned from our advisors, free of charge, <laughs> with our research-oriented minds and unity-oriented hearts. And I leave you all with this. Do what you love and passionate for, never give up, and fight against all the injustices you observe, and know for sure that you are never alone. Thank you all very much, and congratulations. <laughs>